morning and welcome to another episode of Hard Factor presented by the Barstool News Network. It is What the Fuck Wednesday, February 26th, 2020. And uh, you probably guessed it, but it's official now. Mark is going to kick off the show by quenching everybody's thirst for a coronavirus update. It's not something you want to hear, something you have to hear. Then Pat, Wes, and I have a lightning round of other listeners submitted just absolute gems. Right, guys? I mean, you guys feeling confident in today's lineup? I feel fucking great about it, especially because it's your show. You did this. Mm. You gave us really weird stories. It's a lot more fun than politics, and we're in. And, hey, guys, I want to say one thing at the top of the show for our host. Our host has been doing a lot of kick-ass workouts while getting stoned on his IG, so check out at Hard Factor Will if you want to shed the LBs and get with the clouds. Yeah. It's, I've been uh, really enjoying it, Will. Oh, good. I'm glad. I'm glad that 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 uh, somebody besides myself is enjoying them. I'm enjoying them too. It makes my workouts <laughs> less effective, but uh, more I'm, entertaining. For I'm others. just getting high and watching you work out, and it's really it's yeah, almost the same. Thing. It's great. I have to take a lot of takes sometimes, and it, when I have too many takes of the hits, you get too uh, high. then I'm too high to work out. So that's <laughs> I'm still finding that balance. But uh, how often does that happen? A lot. <laughs> anyway, it's a delight. Check it out. Hard factor will. <laughs> 30%. All right. Uh, All right. But yeah, so Mark's going to kick us off, and then we'll get oh. to the lightning round after that. Thank you, Hive, Hard yeah. Hive, for submitting all the, the stories. Hive. Not not at Hard Hive on Twitter, but the Hive, yeah. the collective, the royal and, Hive. And the Hive gets me clearly because they send a lot of these particular stories to me. So as mentioned uh, several times before, I get a lot of these coronavirus stories. Uh, so therefore, I'm going to give you a triple story or almost quadruple story update on the bitch that is the coronavirus submitted by several of the hot. I forgot to big up Will. So um, first up <laughs> from Delwyn up. C from T Snacks with a Z and from Farmer Nate. This is about a video that is circulating mainly on Instagram that looks like it was taken in Tongbai County, China. Tongbai is a county in the south of the Henan Henan province, China. You're, uh, which get, you're getting borders, good. You can tell. Well, I remember. I remember. Um, the Donny. Donny said this next one. Next one's Hubei, right? Well, there's, there's there's two. There's Hubei and They're Hubei, Hubei, I believe. Hubei. Oh, okay. Well, Hubei. Sorry, Hubei province is where you, Wuhan um, is from, and this borders Hubei. Uh, <laughs> so. Let's get into it. Uh, it's a video of a police training video for how the Chinese police should handle uncooperative potential coronavirus victims. In the video, a man's driving a car near a checkpoint and he's flagged down by an officer. Um, everyone's wearing masks and the man rolls down his window and the officer's like, hey, we got to do an inspection. Yeah. And the guy's uncooperative. He's yeah, not like my, he's not my into favorite. It. My favorite part about Go. that part is when they're asking for the inspection. There's a guy with a shield just screaming. <laughs> yeah, well, that guy comes up after Will because what happens is he, cultural he thing, refuses Will. the inspection, so they send in a guy with a with a shield. Yeah, so he's, now he's got a mask and a shield, and someone huddles behind the shield with him. And he, these are the people that are supposed to approach you when you when you're uncooperative, I guess. Yeah. Um, so then the man gets out of the car. Uh, the uncooperative man gets out of the car and rips his mask off and spits on the ground, which is like exactly what you probably shouldn't do. And the police will do what they do next, apparently. Well, you're which disrespecting is, yeah. Father China. And the police officers at the same time. I feel like this guy's going to lose a body part. Well, he's an actor, but this is <sighs> this is this is like it's a, it's a training video. Damn but it. so what happens next after he rips his mask off and is uncooperative is a giant uh, <laughs> butterfly net comes from off screen and is flipped, <laughs> flipped upside down it's and put awesome. over his head attached to like a six foot pole and then four guys in like virus suits top to bottom with masks come and just tackle him and the video ends yeah. so if, if they, you're uncooperative they butterfly net your face and throw and then, you into a pit yeah so mm -hmm. the net is like standard issue equipment to control you yeah the, right yeah. it's an intense operation it's a dog collar it starts it's like with a, yeah. like screaming guy escalates to shield guy then goes to net guy and then yeah. quarantine so it's like an attack dog collar. I wonder they, how many days yeah. you get with the net to train before you have to use it in the field. I don't know, but I'd like to try one. I bet you would. Um, what would you catch? I don't know. I'd try it on you. I'd yeah, catch I'm Mark. not coming anywhere near Pat and the net. <laughs> Wes and Pat, you guys do that TikTok. Wes and good. I caught up together. We'd be TikTok stars. Yeah, you guys will do it. In the same um, net. So this is really sad. It's scary stuff. Net. I feel awful for the people in China, especially yeah. in Hubei and Hubei and, and, and this province. We're still in lockdown. Yeah, I mean, they're, they're, their homes. they're training to catch people trying to sneak into like their county. Yeah, it's sad. Yeah, like it's crazy. Didn't you see something on Donnie's? Um, oh, yeah. I yeah. don't know exactly uh, where that was, but was, I think it was the same place, like Hubei or around there, right? 
Um, it was just like apartments and people were just like wailing at night because they've been locked up in their apartments. And it was For over just a like, month. It seems like, yeah. 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 It was just like, yeah, they've just been locked up. So everybody's just going nuts. Like it's at night. You see all the apartment yeah. lights and it's just like non it's literal non-stop. cabin like, fever oh, in apartments. And yeah, stuff. exactly. It's, it's not good. Uh, here's another terrible coronavirus update sent in by Charles and my wife. Uh, we talked about how the mor- mortality rate is oddly high for the victims of Iran. Remember, we talked about that, that have contracted the coronavirus. It was almost like 20 percent. I think yeah, last did that update. Yeah. Yep. Yeah. yeah. Uh, well, new update from Iran's health ministry on Tuesday. The head of Iran's anti-corona task force has tested positive for coronavirus. Oh, no. He's bad the at head his of job. The, the head of the task force. He, that, his whole job is to not yeah. get coronavirus. He's Pretty the main much. guy. Yeah. He's the. Oh, uh, man. Iraj uh, Harir- Harirchi, Iran's deputy health uh, minister, contracted the virus and sent out a video of himself on Tuesday saying he was at home self-isolating. Uh, just the day before. Har- Harachi uh, appeared at a news conference where he was standing at a podium next to another official, official who denied reports from a local lawmaker in Qam in northern Iran that uh, 50 people had died in the holy city that draws millions of pilgrims every year. So they were denying that. That was the whole point of the conference, really. Whoa. And then Harachi is shown in that video constantly dabbing his head uh, because he's sweating profusely and has the coronavirus but doesn't know it yet. And guess what? The room is filled with other officials, including the person he was standing three Journalists, inches from who everybody. now has coronavirus as well. Uh, he was not wearing a mask because he didn't know he had coronavirus. Mm-hmm. And he just gave all the officials in the room the coronavirus as they were denying the outbreak of coronavirus in Iran. This is like uh, kudos to the New York Times because they were in China right when Corona was breaking. And their fucking reporters were like rolling up to folks with coronavirus being like, hey, what's coronavirus like? And it's like, uh-uh, dude. Yeah, yeah kudos to Get that. out of there. Good idea. Iran confirmed 15 deaths nationwide from corona as well as 95 cases on Tuesday, but there's growing suspicion, and rightfully so, it would appear that Iranian authorities are covering up the actual numbers. Yeah, more cases, uh, yeah. Yes, much more, many more. Uh, the United Arab Emirates has banned all flights to Iran, to and from Iran, and all neighboring uh, countries from Iran have shut down their borders because Iran is in some deep, deep shit with this coronavirus. And lastly, let's talk a little economics. This one's from Winston. According to analysis by a research firm, Cap, research firm Capital Economics, coronavirus will cost the world economy over $280 billion in, the, in Q1 2020 alone. Probably going to be more than that uh, as so well. So the coronavirus gets that money? No. No. So you no should, okay. No. It, it stops it from being made. Yes. Ah, okay. I understand. Yep. You know, common I, misconception there. I'm sure you I know clear that up for all the listeners. I think <laughs> I think that a country that doesn't have the ability to shut down the Internet needs to get coronavirus so we can really get some numbers because it's like all these countries, they shut down the Internet on a Tuesday if they don't like what's going on. Iran, China. So you, want, you want a country oh, that like has you think, the Internet. You think like we're going to be transparent with our numbers, no, but not, not like a good country. No, we're not. No, we're not. But I, but they have <laughs> internet. Yeah, I doubt it. <laughs> People are now concerned about global events such as the Tokyo Olympics set to take place this summer being canceled. Oh, yeah. Cancel those. Yeah. Dick Pound, a former Olympian swimmer and member of the International Olympic Committee, said no one was talking about relocating or canceling the event with five months still to go. But if there's a legitimate pandemic uh, that is potentially a lot more lethal than normal illnesses or flu, then maybe they would start talking about it. Not at this stage. Again, that guy's name was Dick Pound. Yeah, that Olympic village is going to have herpes and coronavirus outbreaks. Yeah. 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 Follow follow the advice of Dick Pound, whatever he says. I agree. He made a choice. He could have uh, gone by Richard. Corona has now <laughs> met two of the three criteria for global pandemic, by the way, and the World Health Organization, or the wait until it's too late guys, as I like to call them, is warning uh-huh. people to prepare for a pandemic because guess what? That classification is coming, guys. Related to the Olympic and future global event cancelization, um, let's talk here. There's a voicemail from a listener. Let me just bring it up. While you're doing that, I'm going to talk about how okay. Mark gets nervous. And what? Uh, here you go. No, nope, I'm cutting you off. Yeah, um, shove that mic right in there. A couple weeks ago, the International Automobile Federation, or the FIA, because they're oh, sorry, based in France and acronyms are weird. Uh, mm. The ruling organi- they are the ruling organization over <laughs> Formula One and all those other auto racing leagues in Europe. Uh, they released a statement saying that they were postponing the Formula One Chinese Grand Prix due to the coronavirus up. Uh, outbreak. Mm-hmm. Here's the thing. The Chinese Grand Prix is, was originally scheduled for April. What? Uh, are they just being overly cautious? Do they know something that we don't? Because no. the Chinese government is on better speaking terms with sports organizations than the Certainly rest of the not. world? Or 
Am I just being paranoid? I don't know, but uh, <laughs> I, I thought that was interesting. Again, I don't know if you all covered it or not. Because, you know, it's a coronavirus story. But, uh, but, but yeah, just want to tell you that. And I also want to tell you all that you're doing an amazing job. Keep up the good work. I listen to you guys every day while I'm working. Nice. It is a fantastic podcast. Love it. Oh, man. So keep it up and take care. All right, that was a long one, but a good one. Um, nice. Yeah, no, he is not being too paranoid. Can't, everything is canceled right. in China. Yeah. Five and that's K's why they're are doing canceled. it. Cause, yeah. The Grand Prix is canceled. April's around the corner. Right. People have that's to only... fly. People for an international uh, F1 race or whatever it was uh, need to make plans to fly and get hotels. Everything's right. canceled for the China, foreseeable th- China future China. China understands, because it happened there first, that this right. is a, a giant issue, and it's not going to be resolved in 45 days. I'm pretty sure the, the Olympics the will Prix. get canceled. That's in, like, July. That's in a different country. Anything in China is canceled through the end of the year. See, that much. sucks because that's yeah. like a bank error for Russia, you know, because they can't even. Yeah, do they have to sit out the next Olympics oh, or is man. this, is, do, they get, do they get away? That's a well, really good point. Speaking of Russia, wouldn't you be super nervous right now? I mean, all you're right in the middle of this stuff. Yes. No, it's winter. Another country that will probably lie about the numbers. Um, oh, <laughs> and as we're about to hit record on the show today, got a tweet update. According to the CDC press release and news conference on Tuesday, uh, and I quote, the American people should prepare for the possibility that their lives may be disrupted because of coronavirus. Hmm. People may have to stay home from work. Schools and daycares may close. People should make plans for how to handle that now. They are preparing as if uh, we're going to see community spread impacts in the near term. They said in the near term. The CDC's Dr. Nancy Messonier said it's not if coronavirus will spread in the United States, but when and how severely. She also said she personally <laughs> talked to her family Tuesday morning about the likely incoming changes of coronavirus. Um, and they said that, you know, people that live paycheck to paycheck and stuff need to start preparing for that as well because you're not going to be able to go to work in a lot of places. They haven't said where yet, but I'm going to assume everywhere. And by the way, um, this is the worst thing to be right about. This is like the worst thing to say I told you so. It's, it's yeah. not being right about the coronavirus is, is it sucks. Well, but that's terrible. <laughs> I've got a theory. I got really sick the other week uh, and I got a theory like when I was flying home. I forget from where, but I, I, there was a lot of sick people on the plane. Mm-hmm. And if I had gotten it one time, now I'm very scared because the second time I know is more deadly. You think you got you it? You think you got coronavirus? I mean, it was <laughs> like a Iowa? flu-like thing that I got on a plane, like <laughs> after the virus Could was have been out. Could flu. Well, I'm just saying. Okay. If you, if that was the first, if that was the first dance with this devil for me, yeah, you don't the want second, second one time. is going to be I much like more dangerous. Box. Uh, Stay indoors, Will. So are you yeah. saying this lady's saying that I should just hunker down it's not in the, like chicken pox. In we the come, heart factor house? You can catch and, it and a second leave. time. It's a bad idea. Yeah. Yeah. If you get it a second time, you have heart failure. Um, <laughs> Man, cold Will. I think I got coronavirus, yeah. honey. <laughs> uh, yeah, <laughs> Pat, Pat, we should we should stay in the heart factor. I, I probably I shouldn't even yeah. joke about that. I mean, but I did get sick after it was out and I was like thinking to myself, like, oh, shit, what if this is this? it was probably just yeah. indigestion. Will. I got to take a few <laughs> days off from the coronavirus updates. I'm pretty worked up. Yeah. Just. uh, Yeah. Mark's having a tough day today. I'm, a, I'm having a tough day today. All right, well, let's move on. Let's move on to the lightning round. All right, this one comes uh, to us from Josh P. Thank you, Josh. So, guys, we have covered the new trend of people bringing their service and emotional support animals everywhere they fucking go. There are dogs and cats and birds and snakes and spiders. If you are a big enough psycho or pussy, you can get your pet designated as an emotional support animal. And the size of these things just keeps getting bigger and bigger. <laughs> <laughs> and with the latest show of how out of hand this has gotten, American Airlines welcomed Ronia Froche and her service animal, Mini Horse Fred, aboard first class on their flight. Fred's hmm. flown first class more than I have. Yeah, right. When you're a That's horse. fucked up. Named Fred. How many I, of a horse? How small? Uh, he, a um, uh, mini horse probably, you know, a... Uh, uh, he probably weighs 300 pounds. No, oh. that's not. No, no, no. That's he looked. Not. He looked to be. You the, don't think so? He, he that, looked. He looked to be the, the exact. No, no. He looked to be the, the exact same size as Leroy. Yeah. No. He's he's a big boy. Oh, it's a PFT's dog. Yes. Which is like 200 pounds. A giant mass. Oh my gosh. Yes. I love. Yeah. I love how Wes said the two options are: you're a psycho or you're a pussy. Too. Yeah. Well, yeah. I mean, what, what else? Uh, uh, you're emotional. Well, yeah. Right? I mean. Right. You actually have health problems. Yeah, yeah. Health problems. Yeah. <laughs> What's the other alternative there? I'm not seeing it. <laughs> you need the animal, the companion. Yeah. You need your mini horse now. 
Oh, really? <laughs> she that's was a, traveling that, to that sell word? this oh, fucking okay. mini horse and designated it as an emotional support animal. Get I'm just, around I'm it. I'm just pissed that I'm going to die of coronavirus before flying first class and Fred's got frequent flyer miles. That's before. true. You shouldn't be able to travel with an animal that if it takes a shit, you need a shovel to clean it up. That's like a, that's like that's a, a good, good rule. Point. Yeah. On your way back to seat well, 32B, you don't want to see a fucking mini horse oh, bro, and like, staring you in the eye. You know, it's Kicking like, you in the nuts. It's like yeah. a thing when you're at a restaurant, you break a glass, like you don't pick the glass up. It's the same thing when your fucking animal shits on the goddamn it's they this happens at home depot because home depot allows dogs watch people's dogs yeah. will just shit on the floor of home depot and the home depot motherfuckers got to clean it up and they pretend that i mean they you should bring shit. bags in for your dog i, I said that's what i say will home depot but it's even worse with a fucking miniature whore equ equestrian well it's okay because yeah. i it's okay because she uh, dressed Fred in like a Marvel superhero uniform to, you know, maybe quell a little bit of the anger that people would, would, would get passing him on their way back to coach. Yeah, the better. incredible stinky idiot. So is that a psycho yeah. or a pussy? <laughs> What's that? <laughs> that she dressed Fred in a Marvel costume. Pussy That's a psycho. Move. That's, That's a, a psycho. pussy That's move. A psycho. That's a pussy yeah. move. Because <laughs> you think she, it's going to soften the blow. Only a pussy would think that. <laughs> <laughs> anyway, so it was from uh, some, from Michigan. They had a layover in Dallas, and then they flew on to California, where, like I said, I think she was just going to sell this to like a rich housewife out in California. So anyway, um, she said the kindness and comments about the how well behaved Fred made her the proudest mommy handler and trainer ever. When do these things exist? Uh, emotional support animals. Like, what year did that come in? Yeah, keep your fucking horses off the plane. I mean, if you're a vet and you have a emotional support dog. By all means, but a fucking mini horse. Are you buying a, a, a like a, a seat for it or not? Not what? Uh, if it's big enough, I think you have to. I think she bought Fred a first class. If Fred seat. had enough first class seats for himself, then D I'm okay with D it. D DM us if you have personal stories related to to this field. But I would agree with Wes. I think emotional support dogs for for vets and people that really yeah. need it. Yeah. That makes sense. We're all yeah. used to that. Mm -hmm. Stop bringing on parrots. Well, peacocks, no, emotional right, support is a new class, exactly. is what I'm saying. It's not like a service animal for somebody right. service with like animal. a service animal. Is one thing. Service animal is, is, is very common. Right, you these are different. These are, emotional support animal is different. Right, a it is very could. different. Yes, yeah. service animal, emotional support animal, clear distinction. Yeah. Service animal's fine. Emotional yes. support animal's ridiculous. Imagine, Will, if you, you, you're going on a flight, you popped your edible, it's kicking in hard, yeah. you're walking through first class, and there's a fucking horse. I would to be I would try to get the seat next to the horse. But yeah. I mean, <laughs> here's you probably can't because it's not going to hear my emotional the, the support pussy animal psycho is, who a owns a panic thing. attack. Mm -hmm. yeah. Just have a panic attack, you know, just take a Xanax. <laughs> Mark's right. just saying horse. what he's doing right now. Oh, right. Thinking about the I'm, I'm, I'm fighting through a panic attack and doing a show. You don't see a fucking horse around. <laughs> you can bum a you don't see a goddamn animal around me. <laughs> Off that horse. Dress like a superhero. Fuck. All right. That's that one. All right. Uh, let's go to uh, another one that's gonna is gonna uh, throw our minds into a blender. Listener Charles has sent my mind careening through a wormhole of endless extraterrestrial possibilities again with the submission of this next gem about NASA hoping to find underground aliens living in caves on Mars. So uh, you see, in 2018, the Insight lander got to Mars, and since then, it's confirmed that Mars has seismic activity. So ipso facto probably has lava pockets underneath the surface and maybe unfrozen groundwater in those uh, subterranean caves. Uh, <clears throat> NASA Jet Propulsion Laboratory research scientist Vlada Stemovicho, uh, that's not the name, Stamanovich, uh, explained the Martian underground life theory in a recent space event, quote, the surface of Mars is a very oxidizing, radiation-heavy environment where liquid water is not really stable for an extended <laughs> amount of time. It's the worst place to look for life uh, sites on Mars. Groundwater may be the only habitat for extant life on Mars uh, if it still exists today, unquote. Um, oh, still. Keyword still there. Mm -hmm. Now, newsflash, uh, if you go to Mars, you're going to get killed and destroyed by something 10 times worse than the coronavirus. Yeah. yeah, it's called cold weather. Take a deep breath, Mark. It's going to yeah. be bad. There's going to no, be no, monsters no. up there. I'm with Mark on this. So the funny yeah. thing about the InSight rover, uh, before we talk about how they're going to locate these monsters on, on Mars, mm -hmm. uh, the funny part about the InSight rover, it's been up there since 2018. It actually broke its drill. So it, had, it has a shovel that is manually pushing the probe into the ground, which is the, the probe is supposed to be able to drill itself like 12 feet into the ground, but it broke, I guess. So... Uh, Basically, they just they shove it into the ground with this this shovel 
arm. Uh, and like it still detected the Mars quakes with that. But it's just hilarious watching the video of NASA scientists trying to like press this drill into the Martian soil from like millions of miles away. It's like a bunch of virgins that can't get a cock into a vagina. They're, a they're trying so hard to stay relevant. Yeah. <laughs> there's going to be there's gonna be monsters up there with 32 space dicks that'll fuck you 12 ways from Sunday. If you go up there, your little uh, little Elon Musk terrarium isn't going to save you from that shit. I hope they nicknamed it Gravedigger. Yeah, Gravedigger. No, that that's the insight. Uh, they should rename the insight to the Gravedigger. And we'll get yeah, give to it more. a cool name. Yeah, we'll get to more names uh, too. So, uh, and we, you might want to write that one in for this next one. So, what are they going to do next? You guessed it. There's a new rover, the Mars 2020 rover. That's what it's called for now. That's going to be uh, blasted up there to the red planet this summer. Uh, and it's got an underground radar mapping system attached to it. OK, so we're going to start mapping the Martian underground cave system, which is like the start, I think, of actually like 10 horror movies. Yeah, yeah. like it's the descent on Mars. Ghost right. Of yeah. Mars. Yeah, yeah exactly. Mars, the descent. Yeah. Yeah, 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 exactly. So it's a real horror movie. Uh, so more than a, a thousand potential cave entrances have already been mapped by just satellite imaging uh, by NASA. Um, but this new rover, the 2020 rover, is actually going to find them for real with the with the radar detector. Um, and it's all a precursor, of course, to when humans will finally be launched up to Mars by NASA in the 2030s and probably Space Force at that time, too, when they will do battle with the hostile alien forces that they find living below the surface. Yep. And by the way, <laughs> you, can troopers. you can still vote on the name of the 2020 Mars rover at mars.nasa.gov. The choices are brought to you by kids who submitted them in a contest, uh, and they are endurance, tenacity, promise, perseverance, vision, clarity, ingenuity, mm, fortitude, God. and courage. Which so these, are, these are fucking teacher influence. No, exactly. Bad names. exactly. Gravedigger didn't make the list. The robot's going to go down the first cave and it's going to find something and it's going to report back. Now I know what fear is. What yeah. fucking eight year old submits fortitude as, a, as an option? None. None. Which is which is my point, Pat. Nice job, NASA, picking all the dullest fucking names possible for the coolest thing you're ever going to do. So yeah. maybe I'm just stick with tenacity. 2020. Yeah, <laughs> I submit a huge disappointment. Exactly. The worst naming game that, that's ever been uh, hosted. Thanks, NASA. Wally. Right. Wally, that's it. Hopefully, right, guys. hopefully we don't fight these aliens like tomorrow. Yeah, I know. It's like when MLS tries to keep their sport alive by getting kids involved in soccer. Yeah. This uh, this story <laughs> comes from our main man, Charles. Sorry, Mark. What's what? Because I was good at soccer. You were great. Thank you. Will would call the games. <laughs> mm -hmm. That's right. It was great. Uh, what's the scariest thing to ever happen to you guys on a plane? Uh, uh, for Will, it's turbulence. contracting the coronavirus. Yeah, coronavirus, throwing up on myself, I've done. Um, horrible turbulence. Yeah. yeah. Yeah, very horrible turbulence to the point where everyone was clutching their seats in front of them on landing. Well, those scenarios are straight child's play, boys. Why don't you sit back and relax and learn about the nightmare for the passengers aboard a recent United Airlines flight from Frankfurt, Germany, to our home state of Virginia. Uh -oh. mm. Meet the El Cuco of the sky, 27-year-old North Carolina woman, Dana Ghazi Mustafa. The boogeyman? Mm, that's the boogeyman, baby. See, it all started when Mustafa was approached by flight attendants while in the lavatory because she set off the smoke alarm by ripping cigs in the can. <laughs> Bold nice. move, considering there's a whole industry based around making a sign that outlines the only thing that's off limits on an airplane. But she went for it. She didn't give a shit. Mustafa reluctantly returned to her seats uh, or seat where she began an alcohol fueled loud crying spell <laughs> <laughs> telling nice. flight attendants that she was flying home to see her family, but they had died in a car accident caused by oh. a drunk driver. Whoa. Tell me that's huh. a joke. Tell me that's not real. Well, in an attempt to soothe this savage beast, the flight staff moved her to another seat to make her more comfortable. Problem is, that whole dead family thing? Yeah, lie. Okay. that was a lie. Right, yeah, good, good, good. Yeah, it turns out this is a classic move that was recently number two on BuzzFeed's top 10 travel hacks list. <laughs> oh, instead it's of like, like so oh, okay, common, so he, people do. So it used time. to be like, you know, like, and I know you're joking, but it used to be like show up in a honeymoon outfit mm -hmm. and then you both wear the same outfit and everyone's done that. So you got to up the stakes. Yeah, you got to show up and be like, I was flying home and then my drunk family's been my murdered. Yeah. Give me a yeah. better seat. But International I kept, flight. <laughs> I kept the flight to honor them because they would have wanted me to fly home from Germany. Apparently, the porridge at Mustafa's seat was too hot because she punched her TV monitor and then threw a coin at the bulkhead, probably accompanied by a wish. 
according to reports, she was then seen pacing the aisles of the rear cabin while suggestively striking the flint of her cigarette lighter. Oh, threatening. Yeah, not good. <laughs> I'm about too to savvy. smoke another one, motherfucker. Yeah, she was about to do something, Will. <laughs> uh, two savvy flight attendants tried to block her from getting back into the bathroom, but they were no match for Mustafa. Just flicking it at people's yeah. faces. <laughs> you. I'm going to do something. Hey, you like that? You, you like you, that? You and your alive family? Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Mustafa shoved these poor flight attendants to the ground. Uh, but luckily, guys, there was a couple heroes of or superheroes of the skies on board. And I'm talking about federal air marshals. Uh, and they were done with their Sudoku. So they, they, yeah, they didn't step in earlier. They remembered they were air marshals. <laughs> yeah. So, yeah, after they finished their, their word puzzle or their number puzzle, they, they stood up and they tried to cut her ass off at the pass. <laughs> Big mistake, because Musafa proceeded to kick one of the marshals in the shins repeatedly Ooh. before finally being restrained. Yeah. I yeah. thought you said this would never happen, dude. Yeah. <laughs> no, I know. Yeah. He's like, someone going to do something. <laughs> yeah, I th I, they told us this was rare. <laughs> one of them, the, one of them, the, the smaller one action. gets beat up. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. The marshals discovered a half empty liter of absolute vodka at the top of Mustafa's open bag, mm. uh, to which Mustafa replied, I'm allowed to drink my duty-free bottle on vodka on my previous flight. <laughs> yeah. Anyway, so they restrained her. It was great. And, and a sigh of relief fell over the cabin. That's as, a tough flight. As this Tasmanian devil of crazy was finally neutralized. <laughs> that was until she began screaming at the top of her lungs, something you never want to hear on an airplane. And that is, I'm going to stab everyone on the plane, then kill myself. I'm Palestinian. That's how we get down. Oh, yeah, that is scary. Yeah, that is a scary thing to hear. Yeah. But you, that, I mean, she's in that cuffs, worse? though. So, I mean, you know that she's just a psycho screaming. You don't know if point. she's got powers. Is that phrase worse than the lady from like a week ago who said, I'm going to uh, open the door and kill all yeah. you motherfuckers? Well, if you knew what's, anything about physics, worse? the stabbing is is uh, a little more real. She's in cuffs, though. And, she also oh, gave, she's in cuffs she at also, that point? She, well, no, okay. she, also, she also gave some background saying that I'm Palestinian, Palestinian thing. and this is how we get to like making it seem like she's done it before. Well, in the 70s, uh, when airline hijacking was really popular, Palestine... Was, it's, it's not like she's. Guilty. It's not like she's the Joker. She's not going to escape her fucking restraints, bro. Well, did, I mean, did, did you, you listen never, to the you've story? Never, you've never seen anyone like her, Will. You don't know what she's. <laughs> did you listen to the fucking story? She fucking bodied <laughs> yeah. two flight attendants and almost killed an air marshal. I mean, you weren't on the plane, Will. Yeah, yeah. man. She's You're like, close to her. Yeah. Something tells me she's in jail now. I think she's going to get out of those cuffs. It's funny, you ask Will, because uh, when Mustafa was immediately taken into custody by the FBI upon touchdown, and she was encouraged to fly only Spirit Airlines from here on out. Yeah. Ah, oh, got him. Got him. <laughs> Place where her behavior, a little bit more commonplace. Yeah. <laughs> All right, guys. Uh, this one comes from Andrew M. Thank you, Andrew. And it's my favorite. It's a fools that work in schools. Uh, so a school bus driver in we, Victor, we New York. We've got to get an air horn to that for some reason. <laughs> um, so, like uh, a bell. Uh, yeah, a school yeah, bus school driver. Bell in uh, Victor, New York, the, decided to turn in his letter of resignation in a spectacular fashion after taking hostage some children on his school bus, um, even though he had sworn to protect them and transport them to and from school every day safely. The bus driver's oath. Mm -hmm. Yeah. The video, which show, uh, shows the elderly man in his, like, 60s, 70s standing outside the bus while many children were locked inside crying and calling out to their parents who were gathering around the bus, kind of like water buffalo do when a lion steals one of their young. Um, the school uh, district, however, um, is once again hiding behind their favorite excuse for when their employees act like complete idiots, saying the driver followed protocol to a T. Um, so when kids on the bus started acting like elementary school kids, you know, unruly and excited to be going home, the driver pulled the bus over uh, short of his normal stop at the apartment complex to regain proper behavior from the children. And that's when the whole scene started. I think he took the huh. protocol a little, little too far. I don't think that that was the protocol. Yeah. Well, I think so Will, Will, is, Will has been victim of a protocol riding a school bus, right? I have been. When I was in middle school, um, I was uh, arrested. Well, yeah, I don't know how I, I was. Uh, I don't know. I was You're taken detained. in by the school police officer after mooning another bus from mm. the back of my bus. Yeah. Um, and what do you have on that rear end now? Well, we'll get to that, actually. Yeah, we'll We're going to get to that at yeah. the last story yeah. of the day, we'll Mark. Get don't to worry. That. Okay. <laughs> My guess is some beads of sweat. How's the weather in Reno? <laughs> Not sweaty. Um, anyway, so, so yeah, I mean, there's this this bus driver. Kids are on the, on the bus 
begging to get off. Uh, parents tried to knock on the door. One even tried to break the kids free through the emergency wait, door. Wait, wait, wait. I'm sorry. We got distracted. So he's just hanging out. He's barricaded the children so in his, the bus. His, his, he's, not, he's like, no, you're not getting your kids. His yeah, he resigned. Was the kids were acting he resigned up. mid-trip. Yeah, he had he he quit and and was like well, punishing I, the kids. That was a joke. I was saying he re- resigned because he's obviously going to get fired for this shit. He snapped. Well, what is yeah. but what is he saying? The protocol. What did he do? He's saying because, because they were unruly. Was, the protocols to stop. The protocol is to try to get regain proper um, behavior from the children um, when when they're driving. So it's like I guess give me a distraction to the driver. Sure. If, you know. So you just wait. It's like sixty seconds of all eight year olds not making a peep, and it resets every time someone makes a peep. So you're just <laughs> fucked forever. Fuck, right. Start it so, over, boys. So yeah, start it up. That he becomes their legal guardian for the period before he regains control, yeah, it sounds he, like. He, he parents them yep. into submission. Because he's not giving, because a parent shows up and he's like, I'm sorry, I'm currently the legal he guardian. He just starts so, screaming. Yeah. He just starts yeah. screaming. Like, this is your fault. You this is when kids like me bully. start pulling their ass out and showing it to every car that's passing. Oh, and, yeah. 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 Spitballs galore. It's just a yeah. mess. Nope. We, can't, we all react in different ways, Will. Can't yeah. have your kid back. So parents are, of course, looking for any way to sue the school district and have met several times over beers to discuss just how much money they're going to get and what they're going to spend it on. Um, <laughs> we'll, we'll, uh, we'll keep you posted on the story to see if they get any money. No, yeah. it won't. That well, guy, that guy handled that completely wrong. If the kids are acting like little shits, and you're going to do something drastic that, that, that's going to get you fired, what you do is you pull over, open up all the doors, and just walk away. That's true. <laughs> yeah, just Wes, let what him go. would you do? Just walk you're the, the only father bar. in the room. Yeah. What would you do if you showed up to a bus and your son was on it, and the bus driver was not letting you get your son? Um, at that point, I would assume the person was insane, so I would do whatever Open it the back took door. to get my fucking kid off. Yeah, grabbing him through the window. Yeah, absolutely. I mean, I'm sure the co- you just call the cops. The cops were the, the cops were the called, and the, like the the, the the head of the transportation yeah. department was there, and he immediately let the kids off as soon as like a smart person showed up. Right. Basically. As soon as the cop shows up, the yeah. Kids so are Wes, off the bus. Wes yeah. just got a few of the kids killed because he instigated and got the bus driver even more upset right also if he no, shows he, up with that haircut yeah. they're gonna think oh the cops are here you know, no, the bus driver is <laughs> not gonna be allowed to drive you you have me. you have an insane person telling me no you can't have your son you're getting your kid because you don't know what they're capable yeah, of. so from outside the bus you're gonna scream at him yeah got it oh, no. <laughs> I'm gonna, I'll break a window <laughs> all right luckily he goes uh, to let's, school. let's move it on to a, a, a modern marvel in medicine guys uh, the advancement of the auto brewery syndrome. This one comes from Hardo Hive member Matt K. And uh, there's been an advancement. We covered the auto brewery syndrome uh, in 2019. And that time it was a man who was getting drunk from brewing sugar in his gut into beat into like alcohol, basically in his stomach. Mm-hmm. Uh, and then it was going into his bloodstream. Yep. So. Uh, that was the that was, I think, at that time, the first known uh, case of auto brewer syndrome. Yeah. Uh, what? I must have been off that. this day. Party uh, Craig. I covered that, yeah. 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 Um, yeah. yeah. So it, now. He's getting drunk in his belly. Right. Now that was in his belly. So there's a new one. We got a new form of this. A 61-year-old anonymous woman in Pennsylvania with diabetes and liver cirrhosis has been the first person in the world to be diagnosed with, quote, urinary auto brewery syndrome. Mm. So That doesn't uh, sound as fun. No, it's like not. you can make some money, though. I don't know. There's a lot of websites out there. That's true. Yeah, it's not as bad. It's much. It's a. Uh, it's it's a condition where the sugar in the urine, because she's diabetic, uh, is converted into alcohol in the bladder because she's got high amounts of yeast present. I'm assuming everywhere, uh, and uh, then it makes her urine alcoholic. It's so, true. It's true, wow. Pat. She should bottle that shit up she because would, there's some sickos out there. She would be so valuable in jail. She would be like, oh the, my God. she'd be like the king, the <laughs> queen bee in jail. She would be valuable. Yeah. <laughs> no, I was the, just a bunch of mouths lined up underneath yeah. her. She'd be tied up. <laughs> yeah, you, you, you water. You, you beat me to it, but the conclusion of this story is yes, it's the most organic alcohol you can possibly get. Yeah. She should absolutely bottle it. Um, the condition was discovered because she was on a transplant list. Uh, I'm assuming for her liver that has cirrhosis, uh, but she kept <laughs> getting rejected for the surgery because they found alcohol in her urine, which means <laughs> that she would have been drinking. And eventually, oh, no. after multiple times, uh, the genius doctors finally agreed to take her blood and they found out that she was telling the truth. Uh, so um, and then they're like, we'll hold off on the transfer because now we can make some money off of this <laughs> different reason. <laughs> yeah, yeah, like, exactly. Have you ever heard of a freak show? I'm, I'm sorry. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I mean, it's a, uh, I mean, hopefully she gets whatever surgery uh, she was denied for. But apparently the booze she's cooking up in her bladder doesn't affect her at all since it doesn't go into her bloodstream because it's in her bladder. So, Pat, like you said, she's basically a booze factory. She needs yeah. to just start 
bottling this shit, and some psycho is definitely going to drink it. A lot yeah. of psychos. But like, I don't what, know. See, the hard part the there ABV? is that our, uh, it's pretty high, I think, actually. Like, uh, so the hard part there, though, is what, um, like, she's going to have to keep the cirrhosis, maybe, to, like, continue to. I don't think you can get producing. rid of cirrhosis of the liver. Someone's yeah, gonna, the liver transplant. Yeah. Oh, right, right, right. Yeah. So, like, she might have to keep her. that. Right. Yeah. It's a, it's a, a, a delicate balance, I think, to keep this thing going. Also, she would be really valuable to high school kids, too. That's what I'm saying. Mm-hmm. A lot of people. Yeah. Would you Think guys drink? If you were underage, would you drink pee booze? Oh hell yeah, bro. Yeah. Yes. Hundred percent. Yes. Yeah. I drank, like, would I you run it through like a Brita, a Brita one filter time on a dry day? Yeah, I think you'd figure out ways, Will, to like de- 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 stink, yeah. De- stink yeah, like it a Brita bit. filter, and filter then, it somehow, yeah. and then the fridge. Yeah. Where were yeah. you, Wes? I was at the UK. I only had one swig and almost threw up, but I did it. You just sat down with the homeless <laughs> guy and had a swig of mouthwash. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Man of the people. All right, guys, this one's from James D. Uh, For athletes that ascend to the collegiate and professional levels, reoccurring injuries just come with the territory. You guys know this. We're big sports fans here. You know, in football, it's often Giant athletes, all of us. Yeah, it's oftentimes (laughs) concussions. In basketball, a lot of times it's an ACL or MCL injury. And and in pole vaulting, um, it's full-on tearing your genitals from your body. Oh, and that's ex- that's exactly what happened to 21 year old pole vaulter Zach McWhorter. That's the end of my career. Yeah. Who got an unexpected <laughs> hafada piercing. That's a piercing of the scrotum. Mm. Uh, Google that uh, after his pole didn't fall the way it was supposed to during a recent training session. I'm surprised that's it doesn't happen good. more often. Yeah. Do we, and that's a dangerous what? sport. Oh, there's a video, Mark. I'll show you. You have a giant, you have a giant plastic pole that you're like basically putting your nuts right next to at the moment that you're Mm -hmm. launching yourself like ten feet into the air. Oh yeah, Yeah. more than ten. Your scrotum's getting ripped at north of twenty. Do they warn these? You know, you know, one or two tall, skinny nerds in high school that go out for the pole vaulting team. That's all they got. He did it on the way down, right? So he got up and then he got over the bar. Yeah, and then the bar was like, I hate Zach. Yeah, and went right up his scrotum. (laughs) Oh, the pole. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. On the other side of the bar. Yeah, and at that altitude, guys, did it like shoot his nuts out? Words like like no. projectile. Oh, like. Come on. It was like it was like a like a uh, an indigenous person spearing his throwing a spear at his. Uh, scrotum. It was like the scene from Green Inferno where they impaled the person. Yes, it was like that. Scrotum. Yeah, he's hung yeah. up there. Um, I could Zombie see right into animal. my scrotum. Yeah. Said Zach oh. of his scrotum after he took a pole vault right okay. to his scrotum. Mm-hmm. Uh, naturally, Zach promptly uploaded the video of his scrotum tear uh, and his seemingly uh, permanent damage to his balls to TikTok, set to the song Mask Off by Future, um, probably because it describes his doctor's prescription, excluding the 18 stitches, of course. Oh. Percocet. Molly Percocet. Mm-hmm. Chase uh, a check, never chase a bitch. It's true. Yeah. Luckily for Zach, guys, this <laughs> accident happened while he was training for the BYU track team. So he's got some time before he needs to know if he completely totaled his junk or not. Um, saying, quote, one day we'll find out if they function or not. And my guess is that day will be about oh, a Zach. year or so after people start stop using TikTok. They plus don't. a reasonable Mormon uh, courtship period. I don't think they function more. I was thinking of Cannibal Holocaust where they impaled the person. No, you're right about Green Inferno as they, well. Green Inferno was like a remake. Right? Green Inferno was the one that they made that they thought that it was real and the actors <laughs> yeah, went into hiding. And right, then, someone got impaled in the pole. Yeah, yeah. That so, story wow. is yeah. troubling. Yeah. You can watch it on TikTok. It's uh, Zach McWhorter underscore. It's great. <laughs> All right. Um, this one comes to us from Triple R Rob 17. Thanks, Rob. Uh, guys, Dennis Mumo is one jealous motherfucker. The native of the city of Kutui in Kenya found out through social media that his wife of 10 years was cheating on him with at least four other men. Oh, uh, yeah. One message he found that's was tough. That's <laughs> tough. Was it, hold on, hold on, hold on. Was it one yeah. photograph or four yeah. photographs? That makes a big difference. It's well, he found uh, he found she was it was word was getting out. And she was, you know, <laughs> yeah, you seen, just hear, seen a few you people. hear about it at that point. Yeah. I'd rather see four photos than just, you know, well, one, you one message need social media at that point. You, 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 yeah. you, you're being told about it by your friend at the bar. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> one one message he found was a nude pic she sent to one of her lovers with the note. There will be fireworks tonight. 
uh, which is enough to make any man go insane and do some drastic things. And what Dennis did uh, was what you might consider drastic. He went right to the source of the cheating, his wife's wandering vagina, and with the help of a sympathetic neighbor, he tied his wife up and sealed up her sealed her up with super glue. And by her, I mean her vagina. Yeah, Whoa. that's what I thought you meant. Mm -hmm. How do you find a neighbor that wasn't fucking her? Well, in Kent, I don't know. I think yeah, maybe it's tough. Yeah, yeah. And then he had Kenya, this neighbor. You, have, you can't deny a request by your neighbor. Yeah. Well, and, and then the neighbor, then he had the neighbor like uh, help him subdue his wife's <laughs> vagina with yeah. him. Did the neighbor know exactly yeah, what like, they were getting into? Or was it like, we're going to, you're going to scare her. And then the maybe don't have out. the neighbor yeah. come in and help you, you super glue. Slowly. Yeah. yeah, you don't want to tell him right off the bat. You have <laughs> you, to work your way into it. You go right. with loose, loose premises. Well, first of all, when the read super this text about the fireworks, are you upset like I am? Right. And do you have any glue? Yeah. What would when you the do? super glue is yeah. gone, <laughs> the neighbor is the first guy who's going to have sex with her again. Yeah. Because so. he's now been there. He's now seen the, the, the scene of the crime. He he's in. Yeah, I mean, I can't think of a solution to this problem. Can you? It's a little less awkward, I guess. Um, so what other members of the small town, whenever other members of the small town found out that she uh, found her, she was in a excruciating pain, could not urinate. Oh, so the God. town, the town then turned oh, on uh, the amateur plumber and attempted to hang him. Uh, so that certainly escalated things. Oh, His shit. wife was rushed to the hospital where a professional plumber or a surgeon unclogged her, and now Mumo faces charges of domestic violence the, with the yeah, The neighbor is the newest guy. He's the fifth guy. What's that? The neighbor's now the fifth guy. Pro yeah, I mean, there's probably more than five. Um, and uh, so, yeah, so uh, he's charged with damaging his wife's reproductive organs, along with putting her at risk of becoming infertile. And his wife is found if, if his wife is found guilty of adultery, she could face 100 lashes uh, with the bad girl stick. See, this is why I'm always a champion of better vaginal education, because he could have easily glued up her vagina without obstructing her urethra, you know, and he just didn't know any better. Honestly, no, no, no. one knows how to do that. Uh, first of all, he, that's assault, liberally, physical assault and sexual assault. That's like multiple assaults when you do oh, it's, that. It's horrible. Uh, I mean, yes. she, she's she's adulterizing the hell out of him to the point yeah. where where he he's going insane he I went mean, right. insane just he abusing this man what a he, cuck yeah and he then, also didn't really I think mean, it through yeah he became like an evil uh doctor scientist yeah. like trying to sew vagina shit. yeah it's like it's <laughs> yeah. like it's like setting off dynamite he, in he's your hearing own vaginas and it's a horror story and nightmares of vagina vaginas taunting him in his sleep just mm -hmm. life-size vaginas they're both facing charges like you know you know because they're both they're both yeah. they're both bad in this two situation. lives ruined will yeah it's yeah. bad that is yeah. sad that is yeah. sad guys hopefully they patch it up you know yeah, <laughs> maybe there's just a week later. Some guys like they just some guy. One of the adulterers is stuck inside her because there's a little bit of glue left over. Oh God! Then you got to deal with that. <laughs> Give love this a is chance. Awkward. Hopefully, hopefully it works. They right? didn't well, get all the glue. <laughs> all right, guys, let's take it over for our last one. To a, maybe it's a feel good story. It comes from the Hardo Hive himself, and I think he bets that we're pretty proud of our home state today, Virginia. I've even got it tattooed on my ass, so there that's what Mark was alluding to earlier. But, you're, miss, but, but you're missing part of the state. Minus the Eastern Shore. Yeah, you're missing the Eastern Shore. I'm, yeah, the, the one of my favorite parts of every state. summer. Yeah. That's the best Chincotique, part. Chincoteague, Chincoteague is my favorite city in Virginia. And, it is and not, Acetique, which isn't on your ass. Not right. tattooed Ironic. on there. Uh, but one day I'll get it added. Um, your father must be disappointed. But you see, Virginia, uh, in Virginia, profane swearing has been illegal in the Commonwealth since uh, 1792. But that all changed last Wednesday when the state voted to not violate the First Amendment uh, with its own laws for the first time in its existence in the year 2020. So congrats, Virginia, on uh, pulling one of the thousands of legal sticks up your ass out after almost 300 years of existence. So congrats, Virginia. Mm -hmm. You can yeah. now curse in public, which uh, has always been legal because it's I caught, fucking America. I caught but, that charge. Well, they, they've been on a college. fucking heater, right, Did Will? You? Yeah. Uh, yeah, no, they're not really on a heater, Pat. This is where I disagree with everybody who's congratulating Virginia, including <laughs> Virginia Governor Ralph Northam, who's taking a victory lap saying, quote, it's past time we swore off the antiquated policies of the past, unquote. Yes, Ralph. Policies like blackface at frat parties. And I don't know, uh, maybe not bragging about legalizing cursing in 2020, you fucking nerd. Uh, this happened on the same day uh, that they made unmarried sex legal that Pat covered last week, uh, which one of the Virginia senators who wanted to keep unmarried sex illegal called it, quote unquote, yucky on the Virginia Senate floor. So guess what? 
congrats for making sex, making uh, unmarried sex and cursing legal for the first time in 2020 in a country that's supposed to represent love and liberty. The two things that these things are outlawing, you fucking douchebags. You know what's yucky? The state laws in Virginia that make you feel like a criminal for living there. I literally moved away from the state of Virginia as fast as I could when I was 18 <laughs> because it's the most square state in the union. So nice baby step in the right direction. You've got about a hundred fucking miles to go, Commonwealth of Virginia. Uh, and that's going <laughs> to yeah. do it for Hard Factor today. Uh, thank you, you for watching. De- did you hear they decriminalize weed, Will? Will, you would have had a tough time in College of Virginia like I did. I caught quite nah, a few charges. I caught, them. The, I caught the public swearing charge. Yeah, exactly. I committed a lot of crimes that they night. They were actively charging people with public swearing across the state yeah. up until they repealed it. I had a public urination slash public swearing that same night that I had underage possession of alcohol. Then I had premarital sex. That state uh, is it was, a, it was joke. a It was a shit show. It is yeah. a joke when it comes to laws and the law enforcement in that state. You know, but I'm not saying. Sound, well, it sounds like maybe we need to take a trip to Richmond, hit up double no. T's, maybe the paper moon. <laughs> no. <laughs> no, no, no. I left, I left, all that, our lives. left all that shit in the rear view mirror. I'm out here in Nevada where they got real fucking laws. Now, and that's that going to do it for one, hard which factor. Is no today. laws. Yeah, no laws. <laughs> exactly. And that's going to do it for hard factor today. Thank you for watching our debate live stream last night it was incredible of course as always and thank you for listening this morning get ready for our new predicted gambling pick show coming out this friday and every friday after that but most importantly have yourself a great fucking wednesday